I am walking the streets of downtown Lexington asking people to tell us about a best day ever. Let's see what they have to say. The best day of my life was when I got married and when my children were born. Today I met my wife in 1982. The day my children were born. The day I arrived by ship on the island of Paros in Greece. The best day ever is the day I married my husband. The day that I became Miss Mercer County. My best day ever is when I graduated from college. Now I know my wife and my kids will be upset at me saying that because those are equally or better great days, but that's the first one I thought about when you asked me. These do sound like some pretty great days. Getting married, having children, being crowned Miss Mercer County, graduating from college, but they all have one reoccurring theme. Everyone mentioned just one day. Now, if the average lifespan of a person living in the United States is 79.56 years, then that's a total of 29,034 days, meaning that our best day ever is just 0.0034% of our entire life. How sad is that? Only one day. Call me crazy, but why can't every day be a best day ever? Our best day ever doesn't have to be just a single day. If we would decide to be present in the moment, learn how to dance in the rain, and surround ourselves with wholesome people, then every day will be a best day ever. I can remember one of my best days ever, and the best part was I never saw it coming. It was chore day in the Myers household, AKA just another Saturday. But it's not quite as bad as you're probably making it out to be. You see, at this point, I had my driver's license, so my chores looked a little bit differently than they had in previous years. I actually didn't mind chore day at all with my driver's license because this meant my responsibilities could be anything from picking up dad's dry cleaning for work, going by the post office, maybe going grocery shopping, or picking up some lunch from everyone back home. However, today's chore was grocery shopping. Piece of cake. I grabbed the back of an old envelope, a pen, and started making my list. But let's be honest, the only real person in the household who knew how to make a grocery list was mom. Hey mom, what do we need from the store? Uh, make sure to grab my yogurt, whatever chips your brother would like, uh, milk, bread, eggs, and anything else you see we're running low on. Okay, I've got yogurt, okay, chips, milk, bread, eggs, anything else we see we're running low on. Okay, oh, we've got a good one here. Cosmic brownies, oatmeal cream pies, and fudge rounds. Got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and sweetie, sweetie, don't, don't forget to grab a few cases of L8. You know we go through those way too fast. Okay. L8, got it. Kentucky's sweetest nectar, by the way. You've got to try one before you leave. Yeah, we, oh yeah, L8, here we go. We had all of this ready to go. Told her I'd call her when I was headed home. List in hand, I headed to the car, not having a clue that this was the best day ever. I turned on the local country station, started making the 8.4 mile trek to the grocery store. You see, grocery shopping was actually one of my favorite errands to run because organization is my thing. I would categorize my list by the path I would take in the store. You see, I would start in the bread aisle, then make my way through the rest of the aisles, then to the drink section, then to the refrigerated section, and then ending in the frozen section. Well, obviously I would end with a dark chocolate candy bar to reward myself for my efficiency, but that was besides the point. I was nearing the end of my list in the refrigerated section when I caught a glimpse of an elderly man. He was dressed in blue jean overalls, a dirty t-shirt, and had no shopping buggy or basket. Oh, and I can't forget to mention the long white beard either. Okay, uh, now that I'm saying this out loud, he definitely looked like a redneck Santa Claus in the grocery store. <laughs> I was grabbing mom's yogurt when I saw him start to walk my way, I immediately started thinking, please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to, hello there, darling. May I have a moment of your time? Generally, I would have said, uh, no, sorry, I'm 
too busy, <laughs> go on about my day. But for some reason, I said yes. Ruth Ann Myers, you did not just start talking to a man in the grocery store with no groceries. <laughs> he then reached for his pocket and my grip on the buggy immediately got tighter. He then pulled out a metal Altoids case and was holding it secure in his hands, just as secure as I was holding that shopping buggy. He then lifts the case to my nose and said, now darling, do you know what this smells like? Uh, yes sir, that smells like cedar. Seriously, Ruthann, now you're smelling things from Creepy Santa? Where are your brains? Oh gosh, my conscience was totally calmed, however, when he opened the case and handed me what was inside. He said, this is a cedar wooden angel made by me for you. This angel is always reminds you that you've got someone watching over you, that you should never worry or doubt yourself in any way. I took the angel and was immediately speechless. I thanked him so much for the kind gesture and before I could catch his name, he was gone. I grabbed the remaining few items on my list, went to check out so I could head home to tell mom about the coolest yet strangest thing that had happened to me in the grocery store. I finally met at home, threw my car in park and ran inside to the kitchen with my angel hidden in my fist. I was about halfway through the story telling mom when she started walking to her bedroom with a smile on her face. She then returned to the kitchen with a fist looking very similar to mine. We kind of grinned at each other and opened our fists in sync, revealing two cedar wooden angels. That sweet, snow-bearded man in overalls had no idea he had given my mother the same exact message just a week before. And he surely didn't know he had just given me a best day ever. A memory I will cherish with my mother forever and a reminder we both keep on us to this day. You know, I, I replay that day in my head quite frequently. What if I would have said, no, sorry, I am too busy and went on about my day? It would have been just an ordinary Saturday. But for some reason, I gave him the time of day. You know, sometimes these little seamless interactions with creepy Santa Clauses in grocery stores will tend to happen. But other days we really just got to Take a deep breath, open our eyes, and seek out the smallest details that could turn any ordinary day into an extraordinary day. Whenever we learn our waitress's name instead of playing games on our phone, when we open the door for a complete stranger, when we strike up a conversation with the man who's bagging our groceries, when we decide to be present, best days ever happen. But let's be real. Some days are gonna feel like they have no hope of becoming a best day ever. Those nasty, gross, rainy days. We're talking bad hair, long line at Starbucks, hitting every single red light, getting a text message saying we're being charged $15 for data overage fee, Sorry, Mom. Who's been there? We've all been there. Oh, yeah. It's awful. We just feel like that day's not going anywhere. You name it, it's happened. But, you know, this may sound like a first world problem scenario, but if we're honest, bad days do happen. I go back to the summer of 2012. I go back to that summer, and, you know, I just think I've been saving my money that entire spring to go on my first ever mission trip to a foreign country, and I was pumped. I couldn't wait to get to the village of Rincon, Costa Rica, and start helping to build a church for the locals there. You know, my friend Tabitha and I, we couldn't wait to get there. We had decided that we were going to be brave and go on this trip with no family members because we were ready to enter our senior year of high school as willing and able young independent women who wanted to serve. We couldn't wait to smell that sweet rainforest air and to start building that church. We had finally made it to the bus where we were about to head off, bags stacked high. And then we touched down and we were informed that the bus ride 
to Rincon was in fact seven hours away. Now, in the United States, this would have taken about three. But because our path consisted of washed away gravel roads, it took a little bit longer. We got to the bus, stacked all our bags up, had the seven-year-old team leader's daughter in my lap, the window beside me, wide open. Because air conditioning in this country is only for the wealthy. We were finally headed to Rincon. Before I knew it, everyone on the bus was cheering as we pulled into the small community building, which was right next to where the church was to be built. We had time to get unpacked and get settled in, and then we met back up for a team meeting to divvy out the responsibilities for the week. I was given the responsibilities of painting and shoveling, which I was more than happy to do. A few days of hardcore work from sunrise to sunset had gone down until we were ceased to force all of our work. You know, let me remind you that this is a rainforest climate, which means that it's either rainy season or not rainy season. And we were there in the midst of rainy season. Now, when it rained, it poured, and our workspace had not yet had a roof built overhead, which brought a halt to all painting, welding, mixing of concrete, you name it. But we decided to do what we could. I remember going into that little community building, sitting on the wooden benches and just staring out at the rain, waiting for it to stop, hoping it would stop at any moment so we could make the most of our limited time frame. Then one rainy afternoon, Tabitha and I had decided that we had had enough. And we knew from the day that we arrived, we had made strong connections with the children of Rincon, and we knew exactly what we had to do. We ran our separate ways, gathered up all the kids, and met back in this small grassy patch in between that community building and the church and danced. We just danced our hearts out, wet hair sticking to our drenched skin, mud splattering all over us from the tiny jumping feet, pretending like we were elegant ballroom dancers as we held them in our arms, but barely able to see their faces in front of us from the heavy pouring down rain. We probably danced in the rain for an entire hour. I'll never forget seeing the mother's faces in the kitchen, tearing up and smiling as we walked back inside to dry off. Before Tabitha and I decided to take action, that day was going downhill fast. But somewhere deep inside, we found the desire to take control and find that silver lining, to literally learn how to dance in the rain. When our personal storms happen, how do we take control and find that silver lining? Maybe it's losing that rival athletic game, but then personally congratulating the other team and making a new friend in the making. Or maybe it's getting a really bad grade on an exam, but then studying so hard that we ace the next one and feeling that sense of achievement. Or maybe it's as simple as texting a friend friend who could really use that support while waiting in that long line. When we learn to dance in the rain, best days ever will happen. I think about some of my best days ever. The day I got that cedar wooden angel. The day my basketball team won our first ever game, which didn't happen often. <laughs> the day I was able to dance with those sweet children and ring home. The day I was able to meet some of my best friends. And they all have one thing in common. They all consist of the people I was surrounded by that day. You know, I'm convinced that best days ever happen all thanks to the people surrounding us in our lives. And that's why this past year has been a year of best days ever. It doesn't matter what flag flies in our home state. Whether we live on a fifth generation farm or the fifth story of an apartment complex building, whether we've been friends for years or we've just met, when we are together as FFA members, we have best days ever. When we're around people like these, I'd like you to meet Jarrett Crowthers. I first met Jarrett earlier this spring at the Ohio State Convention. It was his freshman year convention and he has signed up to interview people for a newscast station. 
specifically for that convention. And I was lucky enough to be one of his interviewees. Although the interview was short, it was Jarrett's inviting personality that led to a further conversation. He started telling me about how much simply being in the FFA has grown him as a leader. And it was obvious the positive impact that he leaves on those around him. It was Jarrett's welcoming attitude towards a complete stranger like myself that made for a best day ever. I'd like you to meet Dalton Teal. I first met Dalton just four months ago at a national leadership conference for state officers and already consider him a close friend. Dalton's one of those people that you can hear before you see, and this definitely held true for the first time that we met. You see, Dalton has one of those laughs that just make you laugh too. And I tell you what, that boy can make me laugh till my belly hurts with his witty humor. Any day spent with Dalton is the best day ever. I'd like you to meet small group number 34 from the Oklahoma FFA alumni camp. I had the privilege of hanging out with these 11 goobers for three days as we learned about effective communication. But every conversation left an impact on my heart. Each of their openness, their kindness towards each other, and the amount of impact they have had since our sweaty camp days amazes me. Every time I look at our group photo, see our group text blow up my phone or think back to our times at camp, it's the best day ever. I'd like you to meet Ark City FFA. At the Kansas State Convention, this chapter invited me out for some late night ultimate frisbee. And who can turn down ultimate frisbee? So I then, luckily enough, with the field we were going to be playing at was right across from the hotel I was staying in. So I headed over to the field, and one of the girls had mentioned she already had a tear in her nylons that she needed to wear for the next day. So I ran back to my hotel, grabbed a spare out of my suitcase, and went back to the field. To my surprise, they were holding a card signed by everyone and a box of fudge rounds, my favorite dessert. Just when I thought my day had been made, they invited me to take part in a little tradition they do after spending a day together. It went a little something like this. Well, eight out of the 10 kids that our chapter brought, this is their first convention. And so for new, exciting, for new experiences and exciting opportunities, we know God is good. Our chapter is, along with four others from Kansas, all made it to national convention safely. And we had a good time. For that, I know God is great. For this being my first national convention, I'm so happy that my eyes were open to so many new career paths that I can choose from. And for that I know, God is great. For Rick Rigsby's awesome message this morning, his awesome laugh, and his awesome socks, I know God is great. For all the amazing people and all the amazing opportunities that each and every one of us can do, we know God is great. For being surrounded with FFA members like each of you. For this, I know God is great. That past evening spent reflecting on our day with Ark City is a memory I'll cherish in my heart forever. When we surround ourselves with people like these, every day is the best day ever. My wish is that we can all have more best days ever that we will decide to be present in any situation we find ourselves in, that we won't shy away from dancing in the rain when we see those clouds of doubt begin to roll in, and that we will find those people who will motivate us, love us, and challenge us to be our best. You know, we've been given this life full of an unknown amount of days. So why let them waste away as just ordinary when they can all be extraordinary? Be present, dance in the rain, and surround yourself with the right people. Let's make today and every day our best day ever. warm 
depth and personality is just like a magnet. <laughs> and everything you do, you are authentic and real, and students are drawn to you because of that. You thrive in situations that most would cower in, and that's a quality that we all <laughs> admire. Whether it's students, adults, or your peers, everyone loves you because you're real and comfortable with who you are. You know who you are, and you know what you love. Because of that, we love you. <laughs> Amplify, grow, and love always. And thanks for being nurturing, goofy, and real. <laughs> Stephen, Caleb, Kristen, Andy, and Victoria. Ladies and gentlemen, your Eastern Region Vice President, Ruth Ann Myers. Here we are.